Hey gang, I just wanted to do a little video uh, about our possible tips and tricks for our upcoming workout uh, group hike thing. Uh, two big things I want to cover here. I'm going to try not to ramble too long, try to keep it a little short and sweet. Um, I want to talk about shoes, your feet, and I want to talk about packs. Uh, starting at the base, let's talk about feet. I know a lot of us come from working out in the gyms. We have nice uh, Metcons or something like that that are great to work on the gym and lifting weights and all that stuff. Uh, but this tread is no bueno. It's no good. Uh, I don't really, really even recommend running too long in these shoes. Uh, actually getting yourself a good running shoe if you're going to do long distance running stuff is a lot better. Uh, where we're going for this uh, hike um, and trail run to follow after that, you will be on your butt over and over again if you're wearing these. There is some uphills and downhills, nothing's groomed or anything like that. This is some trails, we've had some rain, it's probably going to be a little bit muddy. So um, I highly recommend if you're going to stay light, um, get yourself an actual trail runner. These are ultras, uh, they're a little bit more neutrally built. Uh, they work great for my feet, that doesn't mean they're going to work great for your feet though. Uh, go to a solid shoe company, uh, there's Gear West, there's uh, TC Running, and have them actually size you up and look at your feet and see what's going to work well for you. you notice lots of tread on here, all right, up and downhill tread, uh, so as you're digging uphill or trying to put the brakes on going downhill, you don't end up in the mud. So keep that in mind uh, when you get that. These particular brand also even allow you, if you're really going to get into trail running stuff, uh, they have little gator attachments, so you can put gators on there as well, keep the stuff from the inside of your socks. Now the, uh, if you can go a little bit heavier uh, weight on your pack, and you're kind of training for that, or if you're doing a long distance stuff um, for hiking, I recommend going a little bit more with a boot, uh, something with a lot more ankle support. If you have that weight, it's up high, you're going to be a little tippier. You step on a root wrong, a rock or something like that, it's really easy to want to roll that ankle and it ends your trip really fast. So getting an actual hiking boot doesn't have to be quite as tall as these. These are the Solomon 4Ds. Um, offer great breathability. They're Gore-Tex fully waterproof. Uh, they're very stiff. Uh, when I pack, I pack a lot of weight. When I'm out hunting, that's what I use actually. Uh, and you can also do gaiters for these as well uh, or and light crampons. So it kind of depending on the ruggedness that you need. Um, but again, if you go to any of those uh, stores, they can set you up for something like that as well. You might not necessarily need these for the hike, depending on how much weight you're doing in your pack and stuff like that. Running shoes might be fine if you're only gonna do 10 to 15, maybe 20 pounds or something like that. Uh, but these will give you a lot more support in the long run, if you're, especially if you can do uh, more distance. Or if you just wanna try some out that you picked up and you wanna start breaking them in, this might be a good little trip to break them in on as well. All right, so enough about shoes. The big thing now is what you're putting on your back. So there's all sorts of options for uh, backpacks, uh, actual hiking packs and stuff like that you can do. I know a lot of us are gonna be using an M-Pack. Again, you can fill these up with water reservoirs to create how much weight you want. Uh, I know in an M-Pack you can fit the four, uh, which is about 60 pounds. Uh, no, sorry. Yeah, no, that's about right. Uh, so I keep two in here, it's about 30 pounds. Um, I will say though, this three miles, that might be fine if you're already you're heavy or lighter. Uh, they have, the newer ones have some nice padded strap. They also have the sternum strap, uh, which is great. So it helps keep those straps in on your shoulders and not on the outside as you're walking. Uh, keep everything nice, and even, and centered on yourself. With that sternum strap, if you have a pack that has a sternum strap, I know lots of people that don't even use that. I promise you, it makes a difference in the long run. You might not feel it right away or anything like that, but you want that, and you want to keep that weight nice and centered with those straps. Um, so, but it, if you're going a little long distance, uh, just having shoulder straps under weight is going to wear on those traps. It's going to wear on those shoulders. You're going to kind of start leaning forward, trying to find holding on to it, trying to take the weight off your shoulders, and you get a little uncomfortable. Yeah, probably fine with the three miles that we're going to be doing, uh, especially if you don't go too heavy with it. Uh, but if you are wanting to do a little bit of weight, or if you do have options to go with something a little more comfortable, uh, a simple day pack with a waist belt. All right, so this is a big thing here, is you can now transfer all that weight to your hips 
and keep it off your shoulders. You're going to distribute that weight a lot more into your hips. Uh, for many of those that actually haven't used one of these before, the big thing you're going to want to do when you put this on, you'll put it on your shoulders, and you'll keep your straps nice and large and open so it's going to be sitting awkwardly and hanging back. That's fine. You don't want to cinch those up right away. What you want to do is you want to get this seated around your waist and like up on those hip bones, cinch that buckle in, make sure it's nice and tight so that pack can basically just sit on you. So these are nice and loose. I already have this all set up for me. Get that nice and tight, reestablish that. So now all the weight's on my hips and hardly anything is on my shoulders. Now from here, I can cinch down, get everything evened out. Get that sternum strap in there, try to balance everything out. You might have to make little adjustments as you go. When you take it off, you want to, again, make sure you loosen everything back up. So when you, next time you put it on, you can resize it for yourself. It's like keeping your shoes tied. If you keep your shoes tied, you put them on in the morning versus the evening, it might be a big difference. And plus, it's not a good way to break those in. So you want to loosen everything when you, as you take it off so you can resize it as you get through. Make that a habit. So day pack, about 35 liters or less. Um, this still has a frame in it. Uh, the uh, impact does not. A little brain fart there. Um, so this will help transfer that weight again a little bit more. And as you notice, a lot of these new packs have these nice channels, so a little more padding through here and that lumbar support. But this padding here is to help keep a nice air channel going through so you can stay a little bit cooler on those hotter days too, versus like our typical like school pack, which just sits flat on our back. So having a nice little air channel, having a little lumbar support and a good hip belt really keeps you a lot more comfortable when you're doing longer distances or under heavier loads, <coughs> loads as well. Um, I'm gonna move on to big pack and I'll talk about weight distribution a little bit. So 35 liters for that. Uh, this guy goes all the way up to 110 liters. It has an expandable center compartment, sleeping compartment, but you'll notice it has lots of compression straps all over the place. So even though this is as big as a house, this is what I use when I go into the woods for weeks at a time. Uh, it's a more expedition pack. I can also keep it nice and slender. If I throw a lot of weight in here, uh, I can keep it nice and tight. It doesn't have to be a big, bulky, sloppy thing. And you want all those little extra compression slap straps to keep your weight where you want it. You don't want it to work its way down the bottom of the pack um, or shift to one side. You want to keep everything nice and tight. So having all these extra compression straps, very nice to have. Keep everything nice and tight. So with a big pack like this, I'm dealing with. Probably should clean this up a little bit more. When we talk about load and how we want to uh, carry our weight, often a lot of people say get as high as you can. Wrong. You want to center that weight to about the middle of your back or right about your shoulder blades. So typically, a normal pack that's set up, you want to put your light, lighter, fluffy things at the bottom that helps support the main load, the main weight, higher. So I'll throw my whole sleeping system here, um, my TP uh, air mattress and stuff like that, blow up air mattress, all fits here at the bottom. That prevents everything from wanting to slide down there as well. And then after that, I can start putting my heavier little things in there. One, I'll keep my, if I'm using a hydration bladder, I'll, that'll be sitting in the center. Uh, my food will be sitting about in the center as well and other cooking little things like those little bulky things And after that I might start actually throw a little bit more of like more clothes if it's lighter weight clothes up towards the top um, So I, cause I don't want the weight too high so I it More unbalanced as I'm walking like especially this thing will expand And I have the load lifters this actually was gonna sit right uh, about to the base of my neck all right so right at the base so I could get weight really high up there, and if I take a wrong step, I'm gonna tip over. 
uh, especially if the thing is loaded down 70 to 100 pounds. So keep that in mind when you're setting up your pack for this hike as well, about getting your weight set up. So if I'm using more something along this size, that's more of what we kind of think of a um, backpack for school or something like that. You don't want to just take a 25 pound dumbbell, throw it in there. First, that dumbbell is going to be beating up against your lower back or your back in general. You want to have some cushion around that. So take a few towels, stuff them at the bottom, wrap your weight up, maybe go to a 20 pound because now you're adding weight with other things in there. And then you can get that weight higher and also a little bit more cushion if you don't have this frame protecting you. And that will keep it off your back and be more comfortable and enjoy this little hike workout a little bit more as well. Uh, having a pack that is hydration compatible, having a water bladder in there, not necessary, especially for three miles, you'll live, but it is nice. It is nice to have a hose right there, take a little sip and whatnot. Uh, worst thing comes to worst. If you do have an option for uh, holding a water bottle in there, having that at least, you can stop, take a drink, throw it back in there. A lot of people re fail to realize when they do this though, uh, that's actually a little bit harder to get at than they would think. Uh, practice that, see that, uh, that you have that mobility, get back there and grab that, because sometimes these angles aren't built correctly. I know on this pack they're not, on this one they are. Uh, that I can get my water bottle, my big Nalgene bottle out of this just fine. Here it's actually a little more difficult, uh, even though it's a smaller pack, you have to set back a little bit further, and these are, aren't quite as elastic as these ones are. So play around with that too, make sure you're capable of getting that water in and out yourself. Uh, there'll be plenty of trail buddies though if you need some help, so don't worry about that too much. All right, I hope this gave you a little bit of insight uh, for gearing up and whatnot. The other, only other thing I can tell you, it's wooded, so it's probably not going to be too sunny, but it's wooded, so it's probably going to be buggy, so some bug spray might be nice to have. Uh, we have a few other giveaways. Uh, teamed up with a local, um, gosh, they do everything. So Gear West, they do bikes, running, uh, lacrosse, triathlon stuff, swimming. So they have everything like that uh, hooked up with them. Uh, they got you guys some giveaway stuff as well. And uh, hope to see you on the trail.